to run the good race. I am excited to be sharing with you this new sermon series as we look at the aspects as mentioned earlier in being a runner in a good race. First of all, when I think about being a runner, I am taken to the word of God as written in the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the first through the second verses. Hear these words. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that clings closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. There are various directions, if you will, and reminders in this passage that will speak to the three parts that we will examine these next three weeks. And so let us begin with part one, understanding and realizing our passion and our why. Having traveled as a teen mom with my daughter, Jessica, I know all too well the challenges, the commitments, and the joys that are associated with running in a track race. As a follower of Jesus Christ, I also know and have experienced the struggles, the commitments and the joys of being a runner in the Christian race. However, with that comes a time where we are challenged to examine why we do what we do. For the Apostle Paul shares with us in the first book of Corinthians, the ninth chapter, the 24th verse, he says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Our daughter Jessica enjoyed running, especially when she would run and race against her twin brother, which she beat quite often. There was a joy that was within her whenever she had the opportunity to just run. Early in her days and playing in organized sports, she was able to still run, if you will, when she signed up for soccer and later for field hockey. She was able to run. And we could see the joy that was there. However, it wasn't the same joy that she had when she ran track. And so, Jessica made the decision to run for her high school track team. This decision required her to make a transition that all of her energies would go to being and excelling as a runner. As many of you know who have either competed in track events or have a young person who is a track athlete. This type of decision does not come without its challenges. 
For you see, within the track and field event, there are various types of races. There's the 100 and 200 meter race. There's a 400 meter, there's cross country, and yes, there are relays such as the four by four. However, Jessica was willing to stretch herself just so that she could continue what she enjoyed doing most, running and competing in races. However, she realized early on that there were some challenges that she had not expected. The challenge of the other members and their attitudes towards her or even being a participant in the race. For me, growing up in my parents' home, I did what was told to me to do, how I was instructed, if you will, to do it. It was not a matter of discussion. It was not a matter of debate. It was not a matter of questioning why I needed to do this or that. For my generation, that was how it was, and that's how it continued to be. However, I realized later on in life that that same mentality of concentrating on the what carried over into my being a follower of Jesus Christ. I put my energies in doing what needed to be done. And while some would say that's a good thing, it had its challenges too. Because I came into a season where I was in the midst of a storm. And my what mentality was not the answer to where I was. It was not the answer to fueling, if you will, my passion for being a runner for Jesus. It actually put me in a tailspin of questioning why I even want to remain in the race. Comedian Michael Jr. is no stranger to many of you. He is a well-known comedian who travels across the country using his gift of laughter to help bring joy to others. But not only to bring joy, but to be able to assist them in their life's journey. He has a segment that he has every Wednesday afternoon where he interviews a particular member of the audience who has come to be part of one of his shows. In that exchange, they are able to realize from just him wanting to learn about them more about who they are as an individual. And I believe his message on knowing your why will be most helpful to us today. So let's take a listen. How do I know? A lot of people, when they think of the phrase, how do I know, they always want to put the what behind it. How do I know what I'm supposed to do? The, the question that you really should ask is, how do I know why I'm here? Because when you know your why, your what becomes more clear and more impactful. If you know, like for instance, um, people know that I do comedy, but that's what I do. My why is to inspire people to walk in purpose. So I can do comedy, I can write books, I can be in a movie, because all of it is motivated by my why. In fact, I have a new, uh, a new web series out called Michael Jr. Break Time. Uh, we probably just did the sixth episode, it's on YouTube. So every single Wednesday at three o'clock, we drop a new episode on YouTube of Michael Jr. Break Time. What it is, is it's me, I travel around the country and I do stand-up comedy, in case you didn't know. 
And in the middle of my comedy set sometime, I'll stop and just talk to my audience. And we've been filming this and it's, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. So we're in Winston-Salem. I'm gonna show you a clip from Winston-Salem. And I'm just talking to this guy in the audience and he tells me that he's a, uh, a musical instructor at a school. So I was like, all right, you're a musical instructor. You know, can you sing? Let me hear you sing a song. So this is what happened at the last episode of Michael Jr.'s Break Time. Check it. So you're a musical director. Cool. Yes, sir. All right, so um, let, me get a couple, let me get a couple bars of like uh, Amazing Grace. Can you do the first part of that? Let me, go ahead. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Wow. That brought could sing. You know what I'm saying? All right, all right. Uh, now, what you give me the version is if uh, your uncle just got out of jail, you got shot in the back when you was a kid. I'm just saying, let me see the hood version real quick. If you, you know which version I'm talking about, just see if that exists. Let me see what you got. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved. Okay, um, here's what I want you to catch. The first time I asked him to sing, he knew what he was doing. The second time, he knew why he was doing it. When you know your why, your what becomes more impactful because you're walking towards or in your purpose. Wow, church. Was that not a great example for us of discerning the difference as well as the relationship between our why as well as our what. We saw when the gentleman sung the very first time, he was doing it from a place of what? And yet, when he was asked to do it again and when he was given some deep reasons, we saw the difference in how he sung that song. The same is true for us. When we look at our why, then we're able to better understand not only the difference between the why and the what, but also the relationship. I believe that this helps us to put it all together when we're talking about running the race, especially running the Christian race. When I go back to uh, Jessica's decision and the challenges that she was occurring when she made that transition to totally be a member of a high school track team, she was faced with not only challenges of having to now do something she didn't have to do before, which was realize that everyone was not approaching the idea or the opportunity to run from the same position as hers. For you see, we all run into some unexpected challenges along the way. For myself, it was the challenge of ending up 
in the midst of a crisis, if you will, and finding myself without the inner drive, the personal passion. I was relying on the what more so than the why. It takes me back to our scriptural verse in 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verses 24 and 25. Do you not know that in a race, the runners all compete, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win it. Athletes exercise self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable one. In other words, there are those in the area of being an athlete or a runner in this world who run and compete to receive a temporary prize. While those of us who run this Christian race run it not so much for the temporary prize. And understand me, I'm not saying that there aren't some during some part of their journey who do not fall into that category or that trap from time to time of focusing on a temporary reward. But for those who want to run the good race, their focus is more on the permanent prize. Having to face challenges very often requires us to go deep, deep inside us, to find that personal purpose in which we began a lot of times and for others we discovered along the way. Jessica ran into some additional challenges far greater than that of having to figure out what it meant to run with racers who didn't necessarily have the same mindset as hers. But she also ran into a, a challenge of having an unfortunate accident. One which resulted from being hit in the eye with a lacrosse ball, being airlifted to an emergency location that would be able to discern as well as put in place a plan to correct what was damaged. This accident occurred during a time when she would be in the throes of preparing for the next track season. As she saw her world closing in around her, concerned not only about her sight, but also concerned about whether she would be able to run again. She found herself having to go deep within herself, remembering the personal passion that she had, that would later continue to feel her what, which we will examine in more detail on next Sunday. We too incur challenges as runners of the Christian faith. For not only individuals like myself are in a race, they too run into challenges, but they too also go deep to discern their why, their personal why for being in missions, for being a Sunday school teacher, for being a Bible study leader, for being a, a small groups leader, sometimes 
They run into challenges that require them to go deep within them. To not find themselves in a place of just going through the motions. For there are times when we need to stop and examine our why. Because a lot of times, some of the things that we find ourselves doing actually get in the way of our why. And so, as we continue our series, as we continue to look at the words given to us in the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, as well as in the first chapter, the first book of Corinthians, the ninth chapter, the 24th and the 25th verses, I pray that you will reread these words. But not only reread the words, but take time out to do a personal examination, a time to look at your why, what it is that's on the inside, that personal connection between you and God, between you and Jesus. This not only applies to those of us who are running the Christian race. But I think between scripture and comedian Michael Jr.'s words, this applies to us who are running track like Jessica and some of your athletes or those who even may be in the business world because I believe there are some connections and some similarities. So I I pray that as we prepare ourselves for part two, examining our what and the relationship between the why and the what, that you will understand that even in the midst of coronavirus that has turned our world upside down, that we are still in a race and that it is going to be our why that is going to help us to continue, not continue to go through the motions, but to continue to run the good race. Amen and amen. Let's join in a word of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we Thank you for this time together, and we thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to examine what it really means to be in a race. But not only run in a race, but to run for and in the good race. So, God, we thank you for not only the words and the examples of Jesus, but we also thank you for the words that you left us through your son, Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you.